Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to another Downshift Racing Recap. Today is Magnum Stars Tuesday European Classic Race on Barcelona, Catalonia. And we immediately lock up and take out Omar, which is kind of a sign of how this race is going to go. Of course, we're with our Lamborghini Countach once again. And today was a very interesting day from the fact that at this point, if you guys had seen my Friday video, I had created a sim rig conversion into an arcade cabinet as we're watching Jay struggle a little bit into the grass there. And I had just finally finished wiring this up, got it all put together. And this was like the first race back where I had everything up and running. Camera position was in a weird spot. I was, all the wiring wasn't quite there, so I was really just focused on making sure that the recording was running more than the race itself. And on top of that, because I was building the arcade cabinet, I had no time to practice. And that is going to be kind of the theme of this recap, was just no practice in virtually all the races. And... Because Magnum is absolutely... <laughs> and because Magnum is absolutely the worst, we have Barcelona, Catalonia, but with the chicane. And this was, this spurt was just so clunky with a manual transmission car. It was just that back part. Like, I was in the super high revs a second. Honestly, I should be shifting up to third, but then I'd immediately have to shift down to second to go down that right corner, and then I'd keep in second for that terrible chicane part. It was just... This track... 90% of it is fine with the manual transmission. But, again, as we see here, I'm still focusing on the recording. I'm still trying to keep Magnum off from behind me and I'm just locking up and it's just not going my way this week already. I think at this point I noticed that the recording is getting some flashing red lights saying, yeah, this isn't this isn't working right. You better restart the recording and then I completely just lock up and off into the gravel we go. And then at this moment I was able to just stop the recording, get it up and running again. So we'll have a little bit of a flicker of our perspectives here. So finally, after we get up and running again, I am... Again, Omar is just being collateral damage as I'm focusing on my recordings. And again, I lock up and just mo right into him. And at this point, I'm like, man, I'm sorry. Like, I wasn't paying attention. That was on me. Just, just go for it. And for the first four laps, or their first couple laps there, I'm just chasing down Omar and my lap times are just not there again the practicing there was no practicing i'm locking up i'm struggling here i can't figure out what gear i'm supposed to be in and then finally jay with his ferrari 308 gtb it sounded like that he was having some struggles too where when he was able to keep the car on the track it just really flew but there was just so many times like myself where it just you know you lock up or you just mm, kind of miss your apex or you just miss your breaking point and you just kind of have an issue or in that instance there where he kind of has a snap of an oversteer and I do quite so as well but now the race is on for the next couple of laps here I am now feeling like the recording is going well I feel like that I'm not getting any weird flashing lights or errors saying that you know I really should be you know restarting this or something's acting up I can finally just focus on the race ahead of me. Which was great because at this point I've gotten a couple of laps under my belt. I can figure out where the braking points are. I can really start worrying about, for instance, not locking up. Like I can press down the brake pedal a little bit more gradually. Of course I'm still locking up because I don't know how to drive this car. <laughs> but. Oh, oh, and then the mischiefs. Oh, the mischiefs. Gotta love them. 
So like I said, for the last couple of laps, I am just slowly but surely making my way up to Omar and Jay, which is actually a good sign because it means that I am doing a slight amount of improvement. I am finally keeping the car on the road. I am finally hitting my shifts. Sometimes I'm mostly not locking up, or at least in this instance here, as you can tell, I'm kind of modulating the brake pedal so I can really just make sure that I'm not locking up into the both of them there and I'm really just trying to be cautious and careful because as you've seen before there are just so many instances where I had these really dumb mistakes like really amateur mistakes and this is kind of what I was talking about before where I'm just really in the high reps the second gear it should have been a third gear but then we go through this really clunky chicane I am so glad that at least Formula One was able to convince Barcelona or the Catalonia circuit to remove that chicane for their Grand Prix because man it's just I hate that chicane with a burning passion as I kind of do a little bit of a um, fake out here again I am just trying to make sure that I'm braking early enough and then we got Jay who just has a massive hit of oversteer is able to make a pass up on the inside of Omar but it's kind of in vain as I'm miss shifting here I know he's very close behind me and I know it's just one lock up away from losing this spot Jay again just fell off the track so now it's just really myself and Omar I'm trying my best to be careful about not locking up because that's all it's gonna take it's just a little bit too much on the brake pedal a little bit too late and then I just straight off into the gravel. But Omar is really, really, really close. He's keeping a great tidy line, nice and easy behind me. As I'm not quite going up into the next gear again. That was one of the times as well where you could just barely blip up into the next gear and then immediately blip back down. So this spot too is just mainly in third gear. As I go a little bit wide, we're gonna see if I get any penalties. So far, we're safe as we now modulate the brakes again. We're down two tenths. We're making up some time. And I think at this point, we're finally starting to get a little bit of distance. And distance we did make. We finally had our personal best time of 155.2 as we lock up just slightly, touch into the gravel and the dirt a little bit. There's nothing too catastrophic yet. But if we're looking at the fastest lap time, I am easily five seconds off the pace. I'm forgetting which pedal is which. And then off into the gravel we go. There goes Jay. And then I was able to get right back on track just in time to make sure that I was able to cover off Omar. The tires are coated in dirt. And the tires are losing grip as it's getting greasy. And we just grab the inside curb and spin out. And... Ugh, it's just this race, this race, man. It was a clunky track, no practice, really dumb mistakes, and yeah, I just really and the miss shifts. Can't forget the miss shifts. <laughs> God, just everything about this race. What could go wrong did go wrong. At this point, it's lap 10. We're getting close to the end of the race here. I am making some ground up to Jay and Omar. Not quite there. And I'm just starting to notice here. Okay, so my fastest time was 155. I'm at about a 130 right now. I've got 20 seconds to the line before we get to our... It's a time limit race, so at 20 minutes... Whatever lap you're on is your final lap and you're good to go. So I'm hoping that I can get to the line just in time to get one more lap so I can really hunt those two down and the race is over. <laughs> so like I said, just everything that went wrong, that could go wrong, did go wrong. As I then see my competitors breeze off into the distance. I mean, we were talking about less than two seconds if I was two seconds faster, that last lap actually wasn't too bad. I was a 153.9, so definitely some big improvements from the majority of my race there. But I mean, if I was just two seconds faster anywhere on that course in any of those laps, 
I would have had one more lap to be able to hunt those guys down and maybe make up with some places or two. And welcome to our Thursday endurance race. A lot of things have changed since last week. First and foremost, for this endurance race, the only kind of rule is it's you have to use a group one car. And we are on the Le Mans circuit with no chicane. So it's just the long straight that we have to deal with this. We're watching Omar have a little bit of an issue there with his Bugatti Vision Gran Turismo car. I am running the Mazda LM55. And the reason being is because pretty much everybody else is also running this car too. So long story short, I'll try to keep this short when it comes to this endurance race. During our last endurance race, there's some discussions about what we should do for when the endurance race series is over. I quite enjoyed our kind of um, three kind of person, three, four person group teams per se. But I had gotten the feeling that a number of people were getting a little bit irritated with the fact that, you know, other people have out things outside of this game to do. Like, they have their lives to go live. So when we have a situation where people aren't able to show up on, like, the Thursday group races, your team is missing out on some huge amount of points. So it's almost... It becomes a little bit of a problem with these group races to have such large teams where there can be so much variation in schedules where it can completely destroy your team's running. And we had decided then to change up the rule set a little bit. This one was going to be kind of an open series. So with this we'll be moving towards a two-person team and prior to this race we'd done a time trial set our best time and whoever had the fastest time would get paired with the person who had the slowest time whoever had the second fastest time would get paired with the person who had the second slowest so on and so forth and we had a couple of people who didn't quite had their time set and a couple of people that weren't able to make this specific race so more or less the case we had just ran this and said whatever place you get you get and we'll add those points later when we get everybody all sorted out and we get the actual team race going but in this race specifically here we're just running individual people individual cars and again the points later will be tallied up later I've got this moment here where I'm Clipping the curb and I oversteer a little bit and Flanders comes right into me there as I'm going sideways to the track. It's never a good luck to go perpendicular to where the racing line is. <laughs> this... So now that we've got all the rules out of the way... Because, again, I didn't have any practice... I'm finding that when it comes to... Group cars... As far as practicing goes... Group four cars, I feel like I can get away with not practicing. It only takes me a lap or two, a couple of laps to figure out, you know, where my pace is. Group three, need a little bit more practice. Group two, need a lot more practice. Group one, so where the fastest cars are, I find myself braking so early that... I lose out on a significant amount of time because I'm not confident in the characteristics of the car. I'm not confident in my own ability. I'm not confident in so much. So then when we get to these moments where I'm like trying to figure out where, where I need to improve time, I need to figure out how to break later. But in these moments, I don't. And because of that... I don't perform very well at all in, like, these faster group races. So not having Lima, you don't really need to practice a whole lot. It's Lima. You know, we know the track inside and out, so that's fine. But getting practice down with the specific car is very important. And the fact that this is, like, 
lap three or four of me even using this car, not a great sign either. What other people have been noticing is that when it comes to a lot of these Group 1 cars is that their gas tanks are incredibly small. So with this racer was a little bit of strategy that could have been had. So I'm thinking, okay, people are thinking about getting four laps. So if I can stretch my gas tank to five or six, I can maybe take a three stop race and make it into a two stop race. And that's ultimately kind of where my mindset went was that this race would eventually turn out to be a two stopper for me as we're still holding off Shio as he's coming up quick and Taven had made his way through and because we'd only do like a two stop race I'm figuring I don't need to do softs those are going to degrade way too fast hards would be potentially a good idea but I don't think that they had enough grip for these cars are way too fast, so to have hard tires, I feel like I would really need to have a lot better practice to really know where those braking points are, where I can put down the power and when I can't. So I figured that medium tires would be a pretty solid middle ground for the time being. We'll skip ahead here a little bit. We're towards the end of lap four. Quite a ways down from the pack already. It was crazy to see how fast everybody is. They're running three minute dead times. And I'm sitting here with 312, 311. And so we're finally seeing the first of the individuals, of our competitors, start to dive into the pits. Paven does so a little bit early. He's got quite a bit of fuel left, but Junior, a little bit less so. Both of them going into the pits now. As I'm sitting there going, okay, so they are going where I expected everybody else to kind of go. Why didn't anybody else pit yet? So now I'm kind of freaking myself out going, okay, maybe everybody went from a three stop to two stop. And now I am no longer going to have a competitive edge when it comes to strategy. So we move up to the next lap again towards the end of lap five. And now this is where everybody makes their pits. I've got like 11% of fuel left. My medium tires have really fallen off. And just like everybody else, I kind of have to bit the bullet, bite the bullet a little bit and just dive into the pits and say, you know what? It is what it is. So I'm at this point, I'm noticing that this is going to be a little bit of a struggle of a race. So I serve my pit and of the group of people, you might have been noticing an odd person out, and that would be Shio. So Shio had decided to go a step further from what I was thinking. Instead of going a three stop to two stop, he's going, maybe I should be able to try a one stop. So he threw on some hard tires and set his fuel map all the way down to six. He set his transmission pretty low and figured out a way how to fuel save like hell. And that was one of the other problems too, is even though that I just chose the Mazda LM55, a lot of other people were able to actually tune their cars and really be able to, you know, add turbochargers and add the transmission. And because there is not the chicane on this track, people have said, oh, I'm gonna need a super high end top speed. I'm not really gonna need to worry too much about the acceleration, but I need that top speed all the way up because I want to be on field mode 6 and I still want to be running 230 miles an hour down the back straight. And that's something that I noticed too, is when I started the fuel safe and put my car on field mode 2 or 3 or something, well actually, excuse me, more closer to 4 or 5, you'd lose out easily on like 40 miles an hour down that back straight. So it was like you would get up, you would keep it on field mode 1 to get up to speed. When you got to your stop, top speed, then you could flick it da back down to about fuel mode four or five and whatnot. So these next couple laps, it's kind of fun because since I'm doing a little bit less fuel saving than Shio is, I'm able to catch him down these straights like this. But then when we get into the curves, he's able to catch up to me. So we have quite a bit of fighting just going back and forth throughout these laps. So. Again, lap nine, just make that pass on him. And then we're getting towards the end of lap nine. 
and we're getting down to the chicane at the end. We're both kind of waiting for each other to make that move, and we're both kind of <laughs> waiting for one another. And I just, I just let him by. I'm like, you know what? Just, just take this here. It's, you've been looking for it. And again, my medium tires are still not in the best shape. So even though I've only had a couple of laps on them, and I've got about 30-40% of fuel left, the medium tires are already kind of struggling quite a bit. Towards the end of lap 11 here, people are starting to make their second pit stop. Again, I was thinking that people are going to be making three, but they're able to conserve their fuel enough to really make it into a two-stop race. So again, I'm just kind of kicking myself here going, you know, this was my competitive edge and I couldn't do enough fuel saving. I, I just couldn't keep it on fuel map six. Even if I did like Shio did, it's, I, I think he had a power restrictor on or something to really make that fuel really stick in that tank for as long as possible. So I finally make my pit and we're now that's kind of the end of the race. I wasn't able to really... I did manage to change to soft tires, thinking I was going to have less laps towards the end. Uh, but the tires really degraded so fast that it, it was incredible. Because at this point, I am just trying to keep the car on the track. I was able to pass the line, the start-finish line with like five seconds left, and everybody else passed it like right at this time was running out. So now everybody had to wait for me, get my car out of the gravel because my tires were dead. <laughs> and I'm coating my tires and just, <sighs> not great. So to have that entire race to just spend it in seventh and really to just kind of finish in eighth. Yeah, you can tell how little I'm keeping on the throttle here because even just a little bit of a throttle input, again, no traction, con traction control is on in this car whatsoever. There's no grip in the front. There's absolutely zero in the back. And it's just... What do you do? Yeah, I almost spin out the last corner there. Again, not a race that I want to remember either. Race 3. It is our Sunday Cup. So this is one of those series where anything goes as long as it's a whatever the category is for that race of that week. So, this is anything goes as long as it is a front engine, front wheel drive car. That is 600 power points. Of course, we do have NAS on this. We do allow engine swaps. And already... I felt like I qualified pretty well, and I actually did practice. So I tested a couple of different cars, talking with Magnum prior to the race. He was really setting some lap, great laps on this one. It's a very short circuit, as you guys will remember. This will be the one from the Tuesday spec race that I was not a part of. So again, 50 seconds, your lap time's already down. I remember that in time trial, I was sitting... 43 second laps magnum was talking about hitting into the 40 second range so i was really deeply concerned that i was not going to be able to really stay with the pack i figured that everybody would just really take off so i really wanted to make sure i could do my best to really just practice 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 and practice and it kind of paid off i mean i probably practiced for two three hours something like that and even though i didn't practice as much as some of these guys thankfully boost was on week so in this way you know we'd be able to kind of keep close with one another and that was the best part because as you can tell here already lap three of 33 it's crazy the amount of back and forth that we've got with one another and <laughs> as you can tell with that last curb that last curb is really going to screw with me for a couple of spots so i didn't tune this car as far as suspension goes i was able to get the power points right to where i wanted it 
I think last time I drove this car, I just took the suspension and I just slammed it all the way down. And that's going to have a problem later in the race. And it's funny how many times in this course, Omar and Paven on the second half right there would always be exactly where they were. <laughs> and it was just all this back and forth, all this trading paint, but we we're all doing it so respectfully and trying to make sure that we left as much space as possible. It was just an ultra fun race. It just really was. The one thing that was a struggle though was tire wear. So tire wear, I can't remember what it was. I was like at least times four and with the front engine, front wheel drive cars, normally the rear wheels get virtually no tire wear. But the front wheels, because they're literally dragging the car along, they get some significant tire wear. And by the pit stops, even with hard tires. So a lot of people are talking, yeah, I could probably make mediums work or, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to make mediums work. So I threw on a set of hards, made sure my car was set to 600 power points with hards and said, that's what I'm going to run because I need these to last as long as I possibly can. Even still, when I did my pit halfway through, the left front tire was completely shot. So at this point, it was really interesting to see how all these other drivers, how their car's performance was being affected by this traction. Again, with some of these front engine, front wheel drive cars, understeer is a huge problem. And I tried to go for the Civic e EK touring car because it was super light and I tried a couple of the other Civics but more of the newer models and they were like super heavy, super clunky it just just didn't seem to work out all too well for me but yeah, the EK touring car had a lot of fun with it, was able to get some pretty good times out of it as we're now coming up to J finally but at this point it's just chaos. Just straight frickin' chaos. As everybody is, here comes both again, Paven and Omar, once again in the same spot as they always do. And at this point, that was just, yeah, straight off into the wall. Cut that corner way too close. And not only do I get that wall penalty, I'm pretty sure, fairly shortly thereafter, I also get another half second penalty somewhere. Yeah, between those two, those are some pretty egregious quarter cutting. At this point, I could go on and on and on about how amazing some of these fights were. Of course, at this point, Magnum had come into the fold and I had pretty much constant fighting with him from about lap 9 up until here, lap 16. And we had, as you could tell, I'm up into 5th, which everybody's probably thinking, oh, wow, you're doing great. And it's like, no, everybody else just kind of pit. And speaking of pits, if we take a look at the uh, front left tire, kind of like I was seeing before, completely shot. And this is the hard tire, so I don't even want to imagine what it's like with a medium or a soft tire. Those would have been shot long ago as I make a dive up on the inside of Magnum here up into fourth place. Uh, but he's still there, and that's a lot of the key things that happen here, is you can always make a dive up, but especially in this area, so many people would want to try doing a two wide, even a three wide, through those last couple of chicanes. So it's always just really, you, you basically had to keep your radar up and open on your little course map the entire time. Because if you had anything other than the radar, You'd have somebody come up like that, like Flanders, out of nowhere, wouldn't even know what happened. So really just have that radar up and open so you can see what's coming because Flanders is coming up on the inside. I'm trying to play it defensive, but I'm also like, you know, well, let's leave a little bit of space for him. 
I leave the door wide open. I am yelling out the intercoms. Hey, I'm going to pit here, so don't try anything weird. Magnum goes, oh, you're pitting, huh? And goes, there you go. Gives me a little bump into the pit and almost was able to bump me out of the pit or at least into the barrier. So I'm kind of glad he didn't. Now watch this. This is the best part about this. 60% remaining fuel. Just need some hard tires. And we're gone. We're out. And that was even Magnum's comment over the intercom was saying, Huh, well, you don't have to take fuel. They're pretty quick, aren't they? <laughs> so that was one of the nice things here with this car. I don't think I had any power restrictors or any ECU detunes on it or anything of that kind of nature. Um, as this spot, both Faith and myself get caught out, either whether it's our new tires or if it's something on the track we're not sure but yeah it was just a really weird moment where we both get kind of caught out at the same spot but that being said didn't have any detunes on the car i don't think and thankfully i didn't need to be running fuel it just i ran it on fuel mode one and by lap 17 still 60 percent remaining more than enough fuel to make it to the end so now I could just kind of put my head down and focus on the race at hand. Beginning of lap 27, we're in 7 out of 8th place. But please note, we've got Magnum in 6th, Haven in 5th, Flanders in 4th, Omar in 3rd, and they're all right here. I get a little bit of a track limit penalty from earlier that I'm going to have to serve. Not this moment, but next as I'm trying to leave a little bit of space for Magnum. That spot is always awkward to begin with, but then when you're trying to keep your eyes open for somebody who might be on your door that you're not quite sure, it's just something you gotta be really, really aware of. So these, again, these tires are starting to fall off a bit. Paven's car is quite a bit heavier than mine, but we're both experiencing some understeer in that corner as we're just falling out and then magnum's trying up his options where can he make that pass because again with these cars bop isn't turned on but with boost everybody it's just so close and it's just such an exhilarating exhilarating race <laughs> as here we are now going to serve our one second penalty it is so painful because everybody is just on each other's bumpers. Even if you get a little bit of a mistake, like a one second penalty, it just feels like an eternity. But again, with boost on, we're back in the action. I want to make some move up here on Magnum and Paven, but I decided to back out just a little bit and just really give some, some space to really eye up some options. Every single time I send it down on the inside of Magnum here, I go Y, kind of like where Paven is. As we're now looking at three wide, maybe? Nope. But a little bit of contact with Paven there. So we're now going into lap 30 already. Just three, four laps remaining. Can we do any weird heroics? I'm trying at this point to play it safe. As we're losing, we're just running out of our last bit of NOS. I don't want to do too many moves now because if you put yourself up into third now within a lap or two people will catch up and be able to pull those moves back on you. We've got Shio who is now part of the fold now getting in on the action. So he is going to go around the outside of Magnum. I'm not really looking well in the radar and I'm just tapping with him as I'm using my last bit of NOS. Three wide in this area. Thankfully, I don't have any understeer, even though my front left tire, again, is completely dead, and Shio just takes on by. He's got a little bit of a interesting entrance to the first corner, but I'm able to dive up almost on the inside there. I'm able to get a little bit of a better exit into that corner, and I'm now starting to follow the... I'm finally getting that chicane correct where I would always take that middle part really wide and then it would send me into the grass almost always on that last little bit on getting back onto the main straight. So really cutting that middle part 
really gives you a superb exit. A really good line as we're diving up. And this is a moment here. Go a little bit wide. Grass catches me out. And I'm swearing to myself, that was it. That was, that was something that I did not need to have happen right now. That just cost me any potential at making any last minute place gains because now we're just way too far back. We're hitting that last curb way too hard. This is not going to go well. So we're attacking this long right hander as cautiously as carefully as possible and we actually get some good exit speed here and going okay so maybe there is a good chance that we can make up a place here you noticing omar's got a little bit of a shimmy magnum does too we've got a much better exit there do we make a dive up on the inside no we're able to make that place up on magnum but he's going to come up on the inside he's going to want to make that place up on here but we're able to dive up hit that apex just perfectly we don't quite have the speed to get Omer, but he has a last second, one and a half second penalty for corner cutting. Thankfully, I didn't. But now, with all of that being said and done, we're promoted up into fifth place. Wow, wow, wow. So going from two races, no practice, barely even knew what car and what track we were on, to that. What a special way to end the week. I'm glad that it worked out the way that it did, because even though, yeah, I got fifth in all honesty, that was a really good run for fifth. I probably should have deserved seventh or sixth based on all the driving that happened, but to get fifth and to end this week with that, but yeah, what a way to end this week with a brand new arcade sim. I'm still trying to figure it out all the wiring. I'm still got some intermittent kind of flickers here and there. But to have everything set up, ready to go, I can now kind of focus more on the practicing, more on the racing. And yeah, this is going to be a really fun next couple of weeks. This next Tuesday race is going to be the second to last of my spec series race where we're going to be on Toyota Expressway. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really good race. Of course, we're going to have some more endurance races, and then, of course, we're going to have some more Sunday races. So, again, stay tuned for all that. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a lot more coming up. And, again, stay tuned, actually, for this Friday, where we finally discuss, for those of you who had subscribed long ago for Need for Speed Unbound content, we're finally going to talk about Volume 8. I've already tried it out, and I am super impressed. I've got a lot of great thoughts on that. So, stay tuned for all of that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.